Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Um, credited the invincibility, the supernatural manifestation that would be found in the life of the believer that the only possibility to be able to manifest this godlike display of power, grace, wisdom is when you subscribe for the second kind of birth, the spiritual birth, that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spiritual or spirit is spirit. And this morning, for those of you who were not here, let me beseech you by the message of God, especially if you are a minister of the gospel, please do go online or if, if the teachings are going to be made available, please make sure you access the teaching this morning. We dealt with John 17 and verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. I told you that eternal life, the manifestation of the reality of this life of God that we have received, it has to go past the realm of just receiving to the realm of knowledge. Hallelujah. You must know and understand God for the full import of the life you have received to be made visible and to be made manifest here and now. Hallelujah. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Peter said, I mean Paul said. So it's very important for us to press to the knowledge of God. And I said there are three dimensions as far as knowing God is concerned. Number one is to know his character. Number two is to know his ways. Number three, to know his power hallelujah that if your life does not capture these three dimensions of the knowledge of God eternal life the manifestation of it cannot be real in your life the knowledge of his character the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger I told you the key to eroding fear and eroding error from your life is the knowledge of the character of God. There are things that when you know about God, no prophecy, no revelation will devil threaten you otherwise because you are secured in the knowledge of God's character. Hallelujah. And then the knowledge of his ways, the modus operandi of the kingdom. Then the knowledge of his power. Ephesians 1, 18 to 21. Paul said that your the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know is that true yes the what is the exceeding greatness verse 19 says of his power the exceeding greatness he wants you to know it the exceeding greatness of his power that same power that was exerted that brought jesus from hades back to the earth if it could take the son of the living God from hell back to the earth, it can take you from where you are to any position. And it says that you know that power. And tonight, we're exploring one more scripture. And then with it, we we'll trust God to be able to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed so far? Blessed be the name of the Lord, the one who grants us all grace. Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 we're doing second corinthians 2 and verse 14 tonight hmm. now thanks be unto god which always caused us to triumph in christ and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place one more time I'll read. Now thanks be unto God which always caused us to triumph in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. The life that the believer has been called into 
is a life of victory and a life of excellence the bible is very clear as to the fact that we have not been called into a defeated life we have not been called into a mediocre life hallelujah apostle peter well mentoring those under his apostolic care here's what he had to say but ye are a chosen generation he said a royal priesthood is that in your bible a peculiar people he said that you are a people who have been called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light this is a description by peter now giving us a description of what is in the mind of the of god for the believer one more time but you are a chosen generation you are a royal priesthood he's telling you who and what you are you are a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 john in the isle of patmos began to document the things that were revealed unto him and in his discourse he had this to say and has made us unto our god he says kings and priests kings and priests and he says the implication of that confinement that office is that we shall reign upon the earth hallelujah when jesus began to speak to the disciples helping them to understand their identity in christ in what is captured as the beatitudes when we get to matthew chapter 5 beginning from verse 13 he begins this way ye are the salt of the earth he says and he says but if the salt has lost its savour or saltiness wherewith shall it be made salty again he said it is good for nothing except to be thrown down and to be trampled under foot of men the next verse 14 says ye are the light of taraba you are the light of nigeria he did not just say you are christians or will be christians he called us light then he says you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden visibility is your heritage in christ hallelujah he says neither do men light a lamp verse 15 and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick why so that it will be visible enough to give light and illumination to all who are in the house and then he leaves you with a final charge 16 let your light so shine not before spirits let it shine before men that they may see this is god wanting men to see not just to see him but to also see you that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven john chapter 15 and verse 8 says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 and verse 16 says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you are we bible students and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain longevity of impact that your fruit should remain ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 powerful scripture ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 here's what he says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works we are not just members of churches we are not just pastors you know what it means to be a workmanship the tools that an artist uses or a doctor uses or a carpenter uses the workmanship of a doctor is his stethoscope the injection whatever it is the workmanship of the carpenter is his hammer that means every time god wants to manifest he uses men not things we are his workmanship recreated in christ the bible says unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in them are we bible students we're discussing victory now ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 powerful scripture 
the Bible says now to the intent he says that unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the manifold or multifaceted wisdom of God all of these scriptures attest to the fact that the believer is not just the, a weak individual hoping to get by in life and destiny that the life that you and I have been called into settle it once and for all and settle it for a fact that we have been called to a life of victory and a life of grace John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal Jesus said to kill and to destroy he says but I am come not just to make you Christians not just to make you followers of a faith practice that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly more abundantly more abundantly John chapter 3 30 and 31 the Bible says give it to us please John 3 30 and 31 this was John the Baptist speaking and he said he must increase but I must decrease 31 he now says he that cometh from above hmm. Kali Parakusia. The issue is not he that cometh. The issue is where he is coming from. He that cometh. A Taraba man that comes from Taraba is limited to Taraba. But if that man happens to relocate origin, he comes from above. He immediately is invested with the potential to be above all. He that cometh from above, you reflect your place of origin. You reflect the limitations of your place of origin. He says, he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly. He that and speaketh of earthly things, he that cometh from heaven is above all. Are we still together? So the Bible is clear as to the fact that we have been called to a life of victory. As simple as this point is, many believers will live defeated lives quoting scriptures of victory yet living in defeat because the consciousness we are yet to receive for a fact never feel guilty for your pursuit for a life of victory it is within your spiritual dna programmed in you that you walk in and remain in victory are we together yes sir and very quickly before we begin to pray I just thought to pen down four factors that help the believer that puts the believer in the position of victory experientially. What is the basis of this proposition of a life of invincibility and victory? Upon what is our confidence standing? You cannot just stand in the presence of principalities and powers in the presence of men who are being manipulated by wicked spirits and then make such audacious statements not in our wicked world today knowing that the whole world lies in wickedness it sounds like arrogance for you to dare say you are victorious are you aware of the kind of wicked men who are on earth are you aware of the antichrist systems and structures that have been networked across the globe to see to it that the purposes of god is thwarted and yet in the midst of it you and dare say that you are victorious my question tonight and that is also my first assignment is what is your confidence standing upon because the Bible says we know that we are of God and the whole world lie in wickedness when the Bible says the whole world believe the Bible there is no region that is immune to the possibility of wickedness you travel to US you find it there back to Africa you find it there your village you find it there you relocate to your city it relocates with you wickedness is programmed everywhere the Bible says but he said thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph hallelujah are we together but you see the reason why believers are not able to walk in the experience of the kingdom life I'm sure that you understand my thinking as far as dealing with the matters of the kingdom is concerned in the kingdom 
the awareness of the possibilities that have been made available for you is not where the power lies it is understanding the knowledge and the revelation are we together not just of the possibilities but how to make them manifest the Bible defines light something science has not been able to define it says that which makes manifest its light so the assignment of light is to take away haziness confusion and darkness are we together now no matter what you know if it is still shrouded in darkness light has not yet come information may have arrived but light has not come hallelujah you know that light has come because he sustains an impeccable ability to erode darkness in an instant john 1 5 the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not and in this kingdom we rise upon the abundance of the revelation that we have sustained galatians 2 2 i went up by revelation took more than desire to go up i went up by revelation i access virgin dimensions in the spirit by revelation i access power by revelation i access the experience of victory by revelation are you ready now four keys for you to build your faith upon because from the theme of our conference it says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith your faith there is the summation of your belief the construct of your spiritual understanding are we together now when the bible says your faith he's talking from a generic standpoint the summation of everything upon which your confidence rests on that when i came to you paul was speaking i did not come in the excellency of speech are we together now yes he says i came in the power of god that your 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 faith would not rest upon the wisdom of men sophia but that it will rest upon the power it will rest in the power of god so that you are not resting upon shadows and when situations and circumstances come they sway you left and right most people think faith is merely just believing what god has said it is more than that are we together now the bible says even demons agree on many things that have been written in the bible satan has scriptures in his memory too yet he never will become light so what really makes light is it the arrival of scripture because satan has the abundance of it he quoted it verbatim before jesus yet he is the prince of darkness number one What is the first key that guarantees the victory, the experience of walking in victory for the believer? Number one, the awareness that God is the all-powerful God. Please write it down. As simple as this statement is, ladies and gentlemen, you will never be able to walk in victory until it is embedded within your spirit man that this God we have come to serve and to worship is the all-powerful God. Please write it down. The first key that controls the experience of the believer's victory is the awareness, the consciousness that God is the all-powerful God. Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. I have spoken, God has spoken once. Help me finish that scripture. Twice have I heard that power, hmm, that power belongs to God. That power belongs to God. Nobody did an impartation for God to be powerful. Mm -mm. God does not increase in power where does it come from then god does not submit to any other authority for empowerment 
God does not increase in knowledge. He does not have the ability to learn. Who will be the teacher? Hallelujah. I have spoken. God has spoken once. Twice have you heard that power belongs to God. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Just two scriptures to establish the fact that the God that we have come to love, to serve, to live for is the all-powerful God. Our Lord God, he says, Behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth, not by your suggestion, by thy great power and stretched out arm, he says, and there is nothing too hard for you. Man of God, when this scripture becomes a revelation, you will stand and say that vision of a 5,000 capacity auditorium, even with 2,000 naira in my account, I know it will happen by a confidence that cannot be understood using the vista of science. Your, your confidence is derived from your knowledge of who he is, not some person somewhere who will help you. God uses men, but it comes from God. How do you stand before someone on a wheelchair you are watching the legs from your knowledge of biology you are seeing twisted legs that cannot stand or somebody who is working with an aid a qualified doctor who has been practicing for 30 years has told you that his bones probably he has bone cancer and you have the audacity to stand before the world and tell him to stand up you want to destroy your ministry you want to destroy your children How does someone look at you and say if I'm a harbourless you will not wake up tomorrow and then you go to sleep early what gives men this kind of confidence how will Elijah watch the prophets of Baal ladies and gentlemen those guys were not calling fire for the first time no they would not come on stage for a hazard these were masters of wizardry. They had mastered the art of manipulating the realm of the spirit, but not in the presence of Elijah. It, it can work outside of him, but not in the presence of Elijah. Elijah said, cry louder. Perhaps he's sleeping. If I were Elijah, I would be praying and say, Lord, when it gets to my turn, please. Even if I've offended you, let's talk about it later on. But for now, hallelujah God is all powerful God is all powerful ordinary men encounter this revelation and it changed their lives they dead life they dead principalities and powers upon this understanding can I tell you life by default will bully you out of your confidence situations in life as a preacher as a businessman as a parent sickness will come to intimidate you all kinds of things will come to intimidate you that even when you cannot trust yourself you will rest upon the fact that God is not scarce of power he is the all-powerful God Do you believe what you just heard? He that cometh from above is above all. In our discussion yesterday, Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, No, you are too powerful to be a normal human being. He says, We know that you are sent from God. This is the only reason why we will agree. No man can do these miracles except God be with. God be with him. God be with him. Hallelujah. The first basis of your confidence is that this God that you have come to love and serve, he's not just higher than idols. No. This God you have come to serve is not just the most powerful. He's the all-powerful most powerful means that he came and met several kinds of power and it's just that his was higher than theirs all powerful means every power even manipulated power was derived from him it was only corrupted any man who found power on earth 
the central control room of power is God. The power that the herbalist and the native doctor uses is simply a manipulation of the power that was invested in spiritual laws. No, Satan cannot have outsourced power. From where? A man can receive nothing. Is it not in your Bible? Except it is given. Who has been the giver that gave God? Where will they get it from? Who does he worship? Who does he bow down to? He was willing to submit if he found someone greater than him and he searched and there was no one. Then he swore by himself. It's not, he, was, he was willing to be humble to search. If he found someone greater than him as God, he would have submitted. He just did not find it. Hallelujah. So when that God sends you you have to understand what is back in you. The centurion looks at Jesus and says, don't come to my house. I am a general or I am a captain in the army. I understand what it means to be defended by a government that is powerful. I am a man under authority and I know the power that is invested by reason of the authority I am under. I say unto one, go and he goeth. I say unto one, come and he cometh. Jesus, you are not coming on your own. There is an invincible government that backs you. Speak the word only. You don't have to come. Speak the word only. And Jesus said, I have not found such faith. No, not in Israel. Who mentored this man into understanding? That the government you are as powerful as the government that backs you can i tell you god is going to give many of us assignments that human strength cannot bring hear me assignments that will scare you if you are walking in the flesh you will have to walk in this consciousness oh he has spoken once twice have i heard all power all power all power when Jesus resurrected, he said, All hail, all authority in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me. He said, Go ye therefore. He never said, Go ye. He said, Go ye therefore. That therefore can mean the difference in your efficiency. Go ye with this consciousness. If you just go ye as a preacher, you are taking a risk. What is before you? Pharaoh will not run away just because you are coming with a rod. No, it will take more than a rod for Pharaoh to release Israel. He will ask you who sent you. Power. There are instructions and there are things that God has given me. And from a human standpoint, your heart will fail you. You will look stupid daring to take certain steps. But when you know, ha! That he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one you will be such an ordinary man but doing supernatural things things that will first surprise you the doer and then all and sundry as a testament that when god decides to back a man everybody you call supernatural is just an ordinary man who has found a supernatural god hallelujah supernatural God supernatural God when you know that God is all powerful obedience becomes easy because disobedience many times is a product of fear when fear dies obedience becomes easy for instance if God says empty your account it takes more than the ability to sign a withdrawal slip to obey that instruction it is a consciousness if a millionaire that you know comes to see you and all you have in your pocket is say a hundred dollars and he says please give me that money you will give it quickly because your awareness of that wealthy man you know that that hundred dollars you have given can translate into a house for you based on his benevolence so your ability to obey is predicated upon your knowing that that man is mighty Hallelujah. If you hear that the governor has called you and he says he wants to bless you, even if you don't have money, you can borrow without fear. He said, don't worry, I'm returning back with joy. You better give me this thing now. If not, you will regret later on. 
what suddenly changed the awareness that a man of power and might and influence is sending for you how about the one who called you into ministry how about the one who mandated you to go to the nations how about the one who told you he will be there with you only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end when you stand before the challenges and the vicissitudes of life the awareness that God is the all-powerful God grants you such confidence to walk in victory can we continue number two Bible faith and the victory of the believer is predicated upon this two that we have been made partakers of his divine nature we have been made partakers please don't downplay these thoughts this is what must be constructed in your spirit man to walk in victory number one the awareness that God is the all-powerful God but it does not stop there number two the awareness that we have been made partakers of his divine life what does that mean we have been made to be partakers of his victory over sin his victory over death his victory over hell his victory over principalities and powers theologically speaking the implication there is a twofold implication to being a partaker of God's divine nature number one is the implication of your oneness that being a partaker of his divine nature means that you have come into union oneness with him the bible says he that is joined to christ is one spirit ladies and gentlemen these are my hands i've had these hands all my life from the point i was born another one did not come what suddenly changed that this same hand can be laid on a sick body an awareness that i'm not just a christian but you have been you have made now to become a partaker that when you stretch your hand it's not just the human hand being stretched the hands of jesus being stretched that when you speak it's not just the sound of the voice of a man that is being heard that in the realm of the spirit his majesty can echo through your voice and speak his purposes to the lives of men to be a partaker of his divine nature means that you have been made number one one with christ and then number two is your positional advantage Ephesians chapter 2 please Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 6 I like Paul when I get to heaven I need to give that man a high five and a salutation I will say Paul so this is you I've seen you once in my vision but now I see you in your full expression the way that you are and give him a handshake and say thank you for helping us understand the other things Jesus said there are many other things I need to tell you that ye cannot bear them now it was Paul who began to reveal the many other things for instance you never understand through the gospel the implication of our being saved it was through the Pauline epistle that the full implication of receiving the life of God was explained 
so he says in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us verse 5 even when we were dead in sin had quickened us together say together one more time say together together with Christ by grace are ye saved then verse 6 your positional advantage and had raised us up together ah. we will rise in your name Adonai hey, you reign on we will rise in your name Adonai let's finish that scripture and has been raised us up together and has made us sit together count how many times together was mentioned from verse 4 to verse 6 at least three times together 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 carry that consciousness together and the Lord walking with them together healing with them together preaching with them together rebuking those spirits together carry that together mindset ah yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil not because the valley is not there thou art with me the together implication hold on did the Bible not say two are better than one when you carry the consciousness of walking alone preaching alone doing business alone living alone that that mindset has already defeated you someone say together let it enter your spirit mm, together as I stand before the sick body you are only seeing one person but we are together is the word koinonia the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship the sharing together the participation drinking from the same cup it says let that consciousness remain with you don't just say I'm born again I'm a Christian please do not forget this revelation carry that word hashtag it in your mind not on social media together together pastor you travel from your station to come and hear this one word together you can literally carry it as a revelation together ah together in the building plan together in the discipleship together in the crusade ground together whenever your heart fails you you remember together together alone I can fail but me and God cannot fail together there is no doubt that by myself I will fail but me and God cannot fail together uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. before you call me a failure verify if I am alone preacher why have you allowed the devil call you a failure yet he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one let me tell you as simple as this revelation is carry this mindset and you watch mountains give way Elijah knew he was not alone David knew he was not alone Gideon knew he was not alone Esther knew she was not alone Deborah knew she was all the people who were valiant you are the only one who is still thinking you are alone together ah, together David looked at Goliath and said do not think it's only one man that is standing here you come to me with your bows and your spears but I come to you together ah, many of us came to you it's not only one person in one minute open your mouth and challenge every mountain that has stood before you I came yesterday alone but now I'm coming together together with Christ together with Christ doing ministry together winning souls together going to the nations together I started from Taraba alone but together with Christ raise
is for Paul. So if her name is Mary and she married John, her new name becomes Mary John. And if you want to address her properly with respect and honor, are we together? So you know me as Joshua Selman, but you've been calling my name wrongly. There is a surname that you need to add. That surname is what makes all the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, when you say Joshua Selman from an earthly standpoint, you are not wrong. You are not wrong. But when it has to do with the prophetic implication, if you say Joshua Selman and stop there, uh -uh. the demons that challenged the sons of Skiva were not doubting their names. They did not see an attachment to the name. Carry this consciousness. Listen. I, I, I apologize if I sound arrogant but I'm sharing with you this is the construct of my life believe me with all humility the only limitations in my life are the voice of God and process not darkness I don't see mountains in my life the only thing that limits me is the voice of God because of my eternal allegiance to his voice and then the law of time and seasons that there are things that just happen at the sequence of time but to chicken out and to back down because of limitations is an insult to the name that I represent and don't think I'm just making empty noise with all humility I've proven this it's one thing to talk and be a lecturer it's another thing for your life to be a living epistle of the things that you say the things that we have seen the things that we have heard, the things that our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that is what we preach. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. The consciousness of your oneness. You look ordinary. Your face may not have changed man of God, but I want you to go back on Sunday this Sunday, not next Sunday. Climb your pulpit, all of you. Don't go alone. Make sure that if you go alone, you will be disgraced. You will say a lot of things and share the grace and leave as if you went from a funeral. You go with the consciousness. Remember, together, as you open that Bible together, as you open that Bible together, you hear in your spirit, there's someone called John. Don't fear. Together, together. Hear me, if you are together, why are you the only one taking the shame? Why is your ego so sensitive that you are so shame conscious? If I am working with God, if we fail, it's two of us that will go with the shame. He cannot take the glory while I take the shame. Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. So God defends you for his name sake. How do I gather such an intelligent people and come and tell you the power of God will move? I'm seeing 14. You, I hope you know human beings are not animals. <laughs> you look at a man of God anointed with his life of prayer and fasting and tell him that he's going to step into a new dime. What kind of disrespect is that? Except you know what you are standing upon. Otherwise you will make a fool of yourself. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, I'm just a but you are the awesome listen Moses said don't send us alone if your presence will not go with us I don't care what information I know what it means to waste my time I wasted my time for 40 years without your presence I will not repeat it again if your presence will not go with us 
do not send let them call it delay but let me remain where your presence is i rather mark time with you than to go without you please sit down number three ah someone is shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief in the name of jesus can anything good come out of nazareth can anything good come out of your village satan has been bullying you with that mindset let's do number three I'm hearing people laugh in the spirit this is what I'm no 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 I'm not talking of right now by the spirit of God that the power of God I started hearing it just as I went behind like the power of God coming on someone and beginning to laugh in the spirit a holy laughter it's not something you do mechanical it's by the spirit this is what is going to happen here now and when it happens I will tell you the meaning of it it's not just that people are just shouting and bursting into laughter for no reason you see these are signs and wonders in the spirit they are messages a sign points to something if you are going to a babin saloon and you see a sign it tells you you are close there and it directs you are we together the bible says the shouts of joy shall not depart from the tent of the righteous when people begin to have that kind of spiritual or holy laughter as we call it it is not just um uh, some kind of uh, you know charismatic gibberish no 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 the implication there listen carefully the implication to that kind of experience is that there is a message from heaven and God is speaking to us this used to happen in the meetings of Papa Hagen in the 60s and the 70s where by the Spirit of God the Bible said laughter do it good like medicine it's not just this is not some mechanical thing these people are intelligent they will not come and be wasting their time like this Parus, kati bashala kosi ada balanda pariyata. Hera kosh kali kaparato siyata. It is a ministry of signs and wonders, because there are men and women God is bringing into this dimension of grace. In that laughter, there is healing flowing. In that laughter, there is victory being established. How do you stand before God's people and begin to call forth laughter? This is the realm of confidence I want to bring you into. You can fail alone, but not when you are with Him. Two of you do not fail. Halish ka parakus ka debadakus krakata beleke paratos ka vrates ka bia shai sababa sadaka tapras ka debalia. There are three men of God I'm seeing. There is a healing anointing that is resting on you. You are a man of God, three of you. I just saw that glory resting on three men of God. Drink of that wine. Let that river flow to you. Let that river flow to you. Let it quicken your spirit, man. You will begin to walk in superior dimensions. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. You carry that grace. You carry that anointing for signs and for wonders hallelujah you see ladies and gentlemen we have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. Take it higher for me, please. This life that I have is a life of casting. This life that I have is a life of God. This life that you have is the life of Christ in you. This life 
that you have is the life of God. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. Sing it one more time. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life of God. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life of God. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. There is a spiritual surgery that is happening to your spirit, man. You will relinquish a natural life and embrace a divine life in experience. In experience, in experience, where your life becomes a sign and a wonder, not because you are a preacher. No, no, this is not about being a preacher, this is not about being a reverend, an apostle, a prophet. No, this is about being a partaker of his divine nature and revealing that implication here and now. He says that men will see your light and glorify your father. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Again, I'm tempted to thank his lordship, the bishop, for putting, as far as I'm concerned, this is beyond just a conference this is an apostolic and a prophetic convergence within the northeast this is what i believe that god is giving the northeast a chance to by the spirit be repositioned to be part of god's global prophetic agenda that the role that we have to play from this region and god has placed it as a mandate hear me i'm speaking prophetically this is beyond just a program by the Anglican communion. I am telling you, the jealousy of God has rested upon this convergence. It is a clarion call. It has become a prophetic summit where God summons men within a region to train, to equip, to mature, to empower and to release them like quivers that come from a man, like the foxes of Samson releasing them with fire and grace and enlightenment and power please be seated let's do number three mm, the waters is already been stirred in this place i know when the fountain of the spirit is stirred let me do justice to number three and four and then we allow his majesty to do that which brings glory to Jesus number three what is the basis of our walking in victory in this kingdom we have access to the Holy Spirit hmm. the third factor that governs the believers victory is your access to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit John 16 begin our reading from verse 7 The spirit of prophecy is resting on people. The spirit of prophecy is resting on people. It's an impartation service. The spirit of prophecy is resting on people. The spirit of prophecy, oh, like it happened in the prophecy of Joel, it shall come to pass, he says, that I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Did you not read it in the Bible?
men and women male and female upon all his spirit is coming upon them hallelujah John 16 7 Jesus is speaking Jesus is speaking nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you and then it says but if I depart I will send him unto you verse 8 and when he is come the Bible says just a moment so that they walk on on the screen I want to read it and quote it when he's come let me use let me just get the scripture so that I quote it verbatim for you John 16 it says when he's come he will reprove the world of righteousness of judgment of sin of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not verse 10 of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged verse 12 now I have many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it oh I like this when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come and he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you the Holy Spirit is the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God is the Holy Ghost scepter of the king of kings is the holy ghost seal of the age to come is changing everything in obedience hear me the holy spirit is beyond the wind the holy spirit is beyond the dove the Holy Spirit is beyond fire. He is beyond oil. He is beyond candles. All of those things are just expressions of Him. The Holy Spirit is God. Send by Jesus to the believer to help guarantee your arriving and your living a victorious life. It was Jesus Himself who continued to beckon on the disciples who would later be apostles and he told them that they needed the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a man Jesus could not be victorious alone it was by the empowerment of the Spirit it was the Holy Spirit that made him to become the Christ Christos the anointed of God how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power and the Bible says he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him ladies and gentlemen please hear me show me an ordinary man no matter how weak you are be introduced to the ministry of the Holy Spirit I show you a sign and a wonder that is emerging the Holy Spirit is not for preachers the Holy Spirit is not just for men and women of God he said for this promise is unto you and your children your children's children even as many as are far of whom the Lord will call you see the ministry of the Holy Spirit is beyond tongues and prophecy the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God he has a fourfold assignment to believers number one his assignment to you as a believer is to provide guidance number two to provide direction number three 
to bring you revelation and understanding number four he's responsible for empowerment the holy spirit when you ignore his ministry you are bankrupt of revelation you cannot be guided you cannot be directed you cannot access revelation illumination by the spirit you can read the bible without him and all you will see is a plethora of confusing statements it is the holy spirit who takes the veil out of the scripture and now connects the dots so that it ministers life hallelujah 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 i'm reminded of a vision that i had years ago when god was revealing to me my mandate and my call and my assignment I saw an endless sea of people have shared this countless times and yet it never becomes old in my mind because of the impact that this vision had upon my spirit I'm standing at an elevated position and I'm looking at a whole generation of people crying and languishing a crowd just like this only that it is in multiplied proportions millions of people across several races this is what I saw listen and then those who were in front the vision was zoomed and they came and they were crying and i said why the tears and they said there is no food and there is no water and i said who is the cause and they pointed at me i said no i'm not that wicked to rob you of food and water but i was afraid because it looked like there were some people who wanted to harm me out of anger and whatever but I made up my mind that I rather perish than to allow these people to cry as soon as I opened the door there was a giant gray bearded man who stood and he stretched his mighty hand and he said give me your hands now I know it was the Holy Spirit he said give me your hands and I brought my tiny hands and placed it upon his hands and he said I will walk with you and we began to move jumping from one place to another I saw myself doing things I ordinarily would not be able to do because the hand of the mighty one when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible becomes possible when he holds your hands everything becomes possible when he holds your The Holy Spirit, the one who helps ordinary men to become mighty. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? The administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. If it does not arrive, power cannot arrive. Ye shall receive power. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 not just when you are saved alone the power to be a witness comes after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you he says and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth when they were threatened in Acts chapter 4 they came together in their company and began to pray and say now oh lord behold their threatenings and he says grant unto your servant that signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy son the bible says the place shook and they were filled with the holy spirit and they went to preach with boldness isaiah chapter 11 talks about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit as we have come to know theologically speaking hallelujah number one is the spirit of dominion the spirit of the Lord number two the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding number three 
the spirit of might am i right on that and then the spirit of counsel finally the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord seven dimensions of his spirit broken into four hallelujah how do you do ministry without the holy spirit no he's the one who convicts sinners no matter your oratory it cannot translate a man from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son men can listen to you and say wow this is a smart preacher very intelligent i see that you studied well and it stops there it is the holy spirit who translates your sermon from a lecture to life regardless the greek and the hebrew that we interface our preachings with it is only the holy spirit that helps the word of god to convict men and to bring them into understanding preachers don't preach without him businessmen don't do business without him parents don't raise your children without him it will be a risk you'll be raising trouble on its way to happen lecturers all walks of life it does not matter who you are and what you do the holy spirit is an eternal blessing to all men given to all men not to preachers given to all men not just to businessmen some of you are aware of his ministry but you have not received his ministry the third reason why we can stand tall to say we will live the victorious life in truth is because he has given us access to the Holy Spirit let me do a quick recap then I give you the final point number one the consciousness of the fact that God is the all-powerful God number two the consciousness that you have been made today in Christ a partaker of his divine nature the implication being that you are one with Christ and you have a positional advantage you have been made a beneficiary of his victory in Christ as he is today victorious exalted so are we in this life the key phrase for that statement is together do not forget this raise together cause to walk together to preach together to walk together and then now number three we have been given the advantage of the Holy Spirit guiding us showing us things to come let me give you a little story to help you appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit many years ago before the internet became really strong in Africa and before we embraced at the infancy of social media platforms the Holy Spirit came to me one night in worship and prayer and he told me he said in the future people are going to hear teachings for free and will not buy in tapes and CDs again this internet you see it says I want you to take your teachings as raw as they are do not sell them put them on the internet and my angel will take it to the nations this is how ministry will be when he said that it will be suicidal for you to ignore tape ministry and all of that that was the time of remember there's something called rechargeable lantern rechargeable uh, what they call it now remember that thing yes that has light and has a radio too that you go to pray and then you slot in your radio that was when he came and i said lord i believe you today a major reason by the privilege of god's grace for the visibility the influence and the impact he has brought is because of that one instruction the holy spirit can tell you one thing to do one thing to do one thing to do one thing to do it was one miracle that god used to announce me those days in zaria many of you who have listened to me you've heard the miracle about somebody whose spine was broken and shredded completely this one was left for dead they were waiting for a consultant to come from india and to try to do a delicate surgery if perhaps less than a 50 50 chance for survival then phones just came out you know all kinds of phones and then i remember when i was told i said i would pray for him to confess i'm not sure I, I, I don't know if i knew a miracle like that would happen and i remember in 
the night or early hours of the morning I was in prayer and it was time to call that gentleman laced with all kinds of neck collars bracelets and things to hold him and he was at the other end of the phone and I picked the phone and I talked to this gentleman and you could see that he was in pains and I told him I said I want to bring you the life of God and to minister to you I don't know if I saw the guy physically maybe I will have the faith to have prayed for him thank God for phones because I prayed for him true story verified story as I prayed a simple prayer that was less than a minute or two and the next thing I told him move your neck and check yourself and it was a shock and a wonder this gentleman began to scream and the only thing I remember was he removed the next bracelet as he was telling me and he ran to his mother's room and as soon as he opened the door the only thing I had before the phone went off was a woman shouting Jesus and that was it listen by the next day people came to gather you know how someone dies and people come to greet that was how people came to the house to verify if this was just some gibberish by people stage managing miracles or this was true when I saw the gentleman myself and he had done the second x-ray that miracle shook the teaching hospital if many of you who know the teaching hospital in Zaria I began to get calls from nurses and doctors and consultants there's somebody who has a fibroid somewhere we heard about you and what happened one genuine verifiable miracle can advance can announce you in ways that no poster no social media publicity can announce I can tell you this I'm not talking of miracles and manifestations that whether they are sure or not sure or something you are saying that you cannot defend no it's a risk to live your life like that exaggerating miracles and telling lies will only disgrace you and demean your sense of integrity if it did not happen it did not happen it can happen but when it happens it can that is why miracles that happen in the presence of people is powerful because they see it there and then hallelujah I said all this to let you know that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that when he dwells with you and is in you he's able to turn your life around and you become literally you know how an MTN mask is that you place it in one place and it affects everybody within that territory that is what the Holy Spirit can make you become everybody say the Holy Spirit one more time say the Holy Spirit if you care to learn let me give you quickly three keys to building intimacy with the Holy Spirit number one a dedicated life of prayer even in the spirit a dedicated life of prayer not circumstantial prayer not once in a while prayer a dedicated life of prayer number two a consistent atmosphere of intense worship a consistent atmosphere of intense worship number three which like i said yesterday is one of the greatest ingredients in securing intimacy with the holy spirit a hunger and a desperation for his presence that is characterized by brokenness a hunger and a desire for his presence backed up by a life of brokenness oh i need you oh god i need you in my life and then of course the study of the word enhances your knowledge but in truth it is only when he arrives that you understand the word you practice consistent prayer not just need driven prayer prayer for edification and growth submit yourself to intense atmospheres of worship and consistently live a broken and surrendered life and you have secured the keys that attract rich dimensions of the presence of the Holy Spirit now let me give you for our discussion tonight the final key that becomes the basis for the believers victory 
one being that oh, God is the all-powerful God two being the implication of our being partakers of this divine life number three the rich ministry of the paraclete the Holy Spirit number four I like this the fourth basis for our being victorious in the kingdom is that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises second Peter chapter 1 second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 we have been given exceeding great and precious promises he did not just give us the consciousness of his might he did not just give us the divine life he did not just give us the Holy Spirit he also left us thank you very much with great exceeding great and precious promises I read and you follow grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ read verse 3 with me if you are a Christian ready please read according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 whereby I given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust we have been given exceeding great Peter calls them and precious promises what are these promises I have taught here that the Bible essentially contains three things if you recall my teaching number one the Bible contains promises God's commitment to the believer number two the Bible contains principles a revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom number three the Bible contains prophecies a roadmap into the future are we together so every time you open your Bible you are interacting with three dimensions of realities number one promises number two principles number three prophecies let me repeat one last time number one promises number two principles number three prophecies please listen to me as mighty as God is the only basis of his commitment to the believer is his word God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the jurisdiction of his word are we together that means every reality that the word of God does not allow God will not do because he himself has submitted himself he has brought his name in submission to his word are we together that he has exalted his word even above his office as mighty as God is his word is the jurisdiction of his dealings and his relationship with the believer so every time you want to commit God to your life blindly saying God come to my rescue is not a manifestation of faith that translates to victory there must be a scriptural backing God only does what he has said God does not do what you want he only does what you want that is consistent with what he has said look at this scripture with me everybody Genesis 21 verse 1 Genesis 21 verse 1 we're going to read verse 1 please read it as loud as you can if you are a Christian are you ready one to read and the Lord visited Sarah uh-huh stop 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 the Lord visited Sarah not as she wanted not as she cried for the visitation only came as he had said let's finish the reading and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken God only visits as he has said he only does as he has spoken so if you cannot find what he has said and what he has spoken there is no visitation and there is no doing is someone learning 
so if i want to be healthy merely saying god forbid i will not be sick that is just you comforting yourself sickness will ravage you as if it's not aware you are a christian there has to be a basis what did god say concerning your health hallelujah are we together no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick that becomes a basis by his stripes we were healed that becomes the basis if the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will quicken vitalize your mortal body that now becomes your basis on the strength of this scripture you can now declare health how about longevity god forbid even death knows it will not come you will be surprised that you wake up and find out you are dead out of this world in another dimension what is the basis of your longevity number one the bible says i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord number two children obey your parents in the lord that it will be well with you and that you might enjoy length of days are we together number three on account of wisdom wisdom has with it length of days is that in your bible number four the bible says that ye shall serve me and i shall bless your bread and your water take away sickness away from you and that the fullness of your days you will fulfill now you gather those exceeding great and precious promises that is what you take to war in the place of prayer praying without scripture is praying amiss i repeat praying without scripture is praying amiss no matter the kind of energy you are dissipating the basis of god hearing you is not your lamentation the basis of god hearing you is you are bringing his word to him your prayer is only as fruitful as it is word compliant now respectfully speaking there are many believers who do all kinds of things in a place of prayer and that's why we find out that in africa commendably so we exert energy for hours doing what we know to be prayer and yet the result versus the effort is almost one is to one million the fervent and effectual prayer that means there is a kind of prayer that is not effectual mm. it is not just the volume of prayer that gives it power <clears throat> It's not just the longevity of prayer necessarily that gives it power. It is the word compliancy of your prayer. Are we together? This is very important. Exceeding great and precious promises. What makes you believe that you are going to rise and be great and have the influence enough to serve the purposes of the kingdom? People like me. No, sir. That is not a scriptural basis. You are not speaking like a believer. A believer is one who has submitted to the word of God to guide your understanding and your approach in all things. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all that I command you this day. It says that thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. So when you are praying for influence, you don't pray blindly and say, God, you know where I'm coming from i'm tired of being small that is a sincere prayer but it's not a scriptural prayer listen to me god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but is only moved by what he has said let me repeat it for your understanding god is touched by the feelings of your infirmity we call that compassion but he's only moved by what he has said do not forget genesis 21 verse 1 the lord visited sarah as he had said he did unto sarah as he had spoken the lord will only visit your ministry as he has said he will only do unto you man of god as he has spoken the lord will only visit taraba as he has said so if you want a visitation don't just say god come and visit us what is the scriptural basis where has he said in scripture that he's coming to visit you is it not in your bible that the knowledge of the glory of the lord shall cover the earth is taraba not part of the earth you can take that as a scripture it is his desire that all men be saved and that they come into the knowledge of the truth there are many believers who are not scripture based they are not word compliant and so you find out that our lives are inefficient for instance someone wants to rebuke a spirit and he says you know i'm a man of god don't play with me go you are joking no 
demons have never never been mandated to respect your personality no 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 they do not respect you they respect who you represent when men say there is a casting down I say there is a lifting up exceeding great and precious promises are we together now yes I arise and I shine for my light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me exceeding great and precious promises I shall not die but live and declare the blessings of the Lord nothing dies in my hands why because the Bible says I am blessed the works of my hands are blessed blessed in the city blessed in the country therefore everything I touch is blessed how do I know I am a blessing and not a curse because in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 and 3 he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so when you say you are blessed it's not because you are giving people money or doing charity that is not why you are blessed you are blessed because there is a force behind you upon the scripture that you are standing in that compels the world to acknowledge you as blessed of the Lord hallelujah why do I know that every time I speak to people they will be blessed and changed because it is written I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your adversary your enemies will not be able to gainsay or resist he says my heart is indicting a good matter yea I speak of excellent things my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer that means I do not speak and waste the times of people no in my speaking is life in my speaking is healing it is not just because I have studied by the privilege of God's grace I've studied and continue to study to make myself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but like Paul will say I am what I am by the grace of God yet this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all but that it is still credited to his grace can I tell you your life becomes invincible when you surround yourself with the word exceeding great and precious promises if you send me a prophetic word and say Apostle Joshua Selman I saw you dying it doesn't matter whether you are right or wrong I will first thank you for being honest and loving towards me and then I will go to sleep you need to know the scriptures death has to pass before it reaches me mm -mm. I build my life with the word garrisons upon garrisons a system of defense around me is it not in your Bible I lay me down and I slept some tree I said I wait for the Lord sustains me so it is only when the Lord refuses to sustain me that I will not wake up but the keeper of Israel is in your Bible he does not sleep two of us cannot be awake when I am done walking I will sleep because the keeper has decided that he does not sleep nor slumber and the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep are you learning now Taraba listen to me let me give you an assignment tonight as we prepare even if I don't have the time to say anything to you and we share the grace from here I will still live satisfied stop just being traditional or cultural or just humane you have to switch to become scriptural if you want to be victorious don't just say our people said it no your people don't have the power to drive demons respectfully speaking I'm not trying to downplay on culture I believe in culture and all of that I'm teaching you how to be victorious hallelujah I believe with all my heart that I will serve the purposes of God from nation to nation from place to place blessing him because he has made me a blessing I have you have not chosen me I have chosen you John 15 16 and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain hear me music ministers when you stand to sing more than a great voice you must have a scripture what is the basis of your believing you will come and bless the people I think they like my voice you will only be given a special number what translates a special number to become life is that there is a scriptural understanding 
So men like Don Moen can come and stand in front of you and say, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. Do you know why the songs of these men don't die? You don't find at leaping and shouting, but the word of God stops it from dying. Because all they sing is scripture. And the life within the word is invested in the songs. And it remains. Those songs were, were sung before many people, some of our children were born and it still remains eternal. When your life becomes garrisoned, let me say it for one last time, with scripture, everything about your life, how do you know your children will not become um, some, some wayward children? What is the basis? I am training them well. Wrong. No daddy. No mommy. That is not what some of the most disciplined families have sadly produced some children that are very disturbing. There must be a scripture. I and the children the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. My children are great and they are taught of the Lord. Great is their peace. That becomes your confession. Can I tell you the truth? When your life becomes governed by scripture, you get up in the morning and you want to leave. What gives you a guarantee that you are returning back in peace in this wicked world? Your going out is blessed, is it not in your Bible? And your coming in is blessed. The reason why we walk victorious is that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises. I expect men to bless me every day. I expect men to favor me every day because I have become Beulah and Hephzibah. It is true. I truly believe this with all my heart. I believe that the favor of God is upon my life. Why? Because the Bible says that he has surrounded us with favor as with a shield. And I know what it is able to do. What is your life built upon? Is it built on sand or is it built on the rock? Man of God, beyond having a vision, go and get scripture for your ministry. Don't tell people I will excel because I had a vision. It's too small a reason. Go and find a scriptural basis, then let your vision support it. What makes you believe people will come to hear you? I think I'm a sincere person. No, sir. I think I can preach. You're right, but no, sir. I think I'm honest. No, sir. I think I'm from Taraba. No, sir. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. Now we're going to pray a few minutes and then we'll step into that impartation. Please do not forget what you have learned tonight as simple and as basic as it is. If you have been born again to win, you must understand these four factors. They are not all. There are many more. But these are foundational truths that your faith must be anchored upon. Number one, the almightiness of God. Number two, the fact that you are a partaker of his divine nature, one with Christ, together with Christ, exalted with Christ, is a spiritual reality above principalities and powers and all kinds of things. I remember years ago when people started coming with charms, sometimes they would repent. When they repent, maybe families that serve idols and they don't know what to do with some of these charms, they now suggest that they should bring it and come and drop it. Let me help them and pray over it so that they go in peace. And I now said, can you imagine something that has been killing people for decades before they were born? They now carry it and come and drop it at their apostle. <laughs> they drop those things there and leave. Know what to do with it there. You and God, you said God sent you. So, I mean, we're tired of this thing killing us. We've repented, so... We cannot see God, but since you say you are close to him, help us and know what to do with this chance. You know how many of those things I've held with my hand? There are things you cannot fake. No. 
it is only when we get to heaven we will know the amounts of poisons we have eaten the shrines that have carried our names on a daily basis let him go down let him fail but thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph always 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 there have been times I've been wanting to take trips and sincere people loving people they call and say apostle please don't go I am a prophet and I've had a revelation I saw a ghastly motor accident and I saw you dead and they were not lying that was the plan of the enemy but what then is the excellency of dominion I congratulate them for seeing and I salute their sincerity and compassion but you see there is no business between an aircraft and an angry crocodile in the water they have no meeting point an aircraft is far passing the sea it is only when you come to that domain that you become a victim of that crocodile have you ever seen a pilot saying we have an issue with the cry of crocodiles they are hungry and so will not be able to pass the Mediterranean there are times where you travel across the globe 90% of your trip is across the sea with sharks and whales yet those in the flight do not even know it has not stopped the existence of the shark nor did it stop their hunger you were only elevated to a plane far beyond their reach Do you believe this? Yes. So if someone calls you and says, Ah, I saw your name in a shrine. Oh. You start praying for the salvation of the harbalist because he has put himself in trouble. He said, Why do you want to do this to your children? Your children are longing for a father. My assignment is for you to repent and change. Who gave you this contract that you want to end your life for no reason? Is it not in your Bible that he suffered no man to do them wrong? He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. You see, you can quote that scripture and nothing happens. But when your life becomes submitted to the word, I remind you of Genesis 21.1. The Lord will only visit you as he has said. He will only do unto you. As he has spoken one more time the Lord will only visit you as he has said he will only do unto you as he has spoken man of God expect visitations because he has said it expect a performance because he has spoken it rise up on your feet as we pray I'll just give us two prayer points and then I'll speak over our lives whether you are outside inside following online now is the time where your spirit becomes enlarged and open ready to receive one prayer point father I decree and declare and I ask in the name of Jesus that my life becomes a manifestation of the victory that is in Christ lift your voice and begin to pray that my life becomes a manifestation and those who are watching from your various homes watching by way of television participate in the prayer watching by way of internet make sure you are praying that my life becomes a manifestation North East pray Taraba pray believers pray in the name of Jesus that my life becomes a manifestation of the victory that is in Christ this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith this is the victory that overcomes principalities and powers is someone praying I decree and declare that I begin to walk in the experience of eternal life the experience of the life of God that I have received in the name of Jesus I decree in the name of Jesus I declare hallelujah hallelujah final prayer point 
I will add everything in one. Father, that which you had in store for me in the womb of prophecy as you put this conference to pass, I'm ready to receive it now. Is it the healing? Is it the impartation? Is it the direction as it has come? That which God has in store for you, I'd like you to open your mouth and aggressively pray in the next one minute. Go ahead and pray. That which you have for my church, my ministry, my business, the territory, the government, families, politicians, captains of industry, academicians, the institutions of learning within this region. In the name of Jesus, now we are ready to receive. The Bible says, he that told, you have asked for nothing. It says, ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. Is it a greater grace for ministry? Go ahead and ask. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Hallelujah. 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 Now you have prayed. It's my turn to pray for you. Every time God wants to help men, he sends men. Every time Satan wants to destroy men, he sends men. Every time the season in a man's life is about to change, he sends men. Every time God wants to restore, he sends men. In John chapter 5, when Jesus met the man at Bethesda and said, why are you in this condition? His only request is, I have no man. I have no man. I know what to do, but I have no man. And something that can happen in one moment was prolonged for 38 years. Not because the river dried up. I have no man hallelujah there were many widows in Zarephath but to none was Elijah sent the day of joy in a man's life is the day he encounters the grace sent to him not the grace available the grace sent the grace sent the grace sent I believe with all my heart that standing in partnership with the grace upon his lordship and the corporate anointing within this place that there will be a distribution of possibilities that men will access graces we need this not just for our sake not just for the sake of saying i am anointed i am a great man but for the sake of god and the sake of his sheep are we together now praise the name of the lord now let me start tonight by rebuking the operation of spirits it will be a quick walk. I don't intend to stretch us longer than necessary. We have been patiently waiting. Many of us have stood all the way outside and around. And it's not my intention to stretch us longer than necessary. But let me back up. Please don't be distracted. No moving around. Have your attention wrapped and fixed on Jesus as you receive. Yeah. Spirits are real. They manipulate men. They have a singular assignment of thwarting the purposes of God. And as you may have learned, there are three bases, three scriptural bases for any advantage that Satan may have over men. Number one is called covenant. Number two is called ignorance. Number three is called disobedience. These are the only platforms upon which Satan is able to afflict the saints. Let me repeat it one last time for your knowledge. Number one, covenants. Now, the danger with covenants is that they have a transgenerational implication. You don't have to be there, but except it is being superimposed by the mystery of the blood and mercy, it will work. Covenants. Number two, ignorance. Number three, disobedience. We judge disobedience in this kingdom only when our obedience is complete every time god wants to judge disobedience he gives you a room to obey 
and for these three reasons there are many people here who are under all kinds of satanic oppressions no wonder the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions if you understand what deliverance is from a scriptural basis you are not adding to what christ has done deliverance is a spiritual strategy where the victory that has been wrought in christ is established experientially in the life of the believer are we together and there are two levels of deliverance as taught in scripture number one there is the casting away through the power of the word and the blood the spirit influences that attach themselves to men and attach themselves to situations the second dimension is deliverance through transformation where you now bring the word of God and reprogram the understanding of that person so that through ignorance it does not keep the door of his heart open and then number three if you may add is called the discipline of conformity I have done a teaching complete deliverance is based on these three things number one casting out the spirit influences that have now plagued men just because jesus died and gave you victory does not mean you know by now that it automatically you're receiving jesus gives you access you're walking in obedience makes it your experience the same cross that set you free from sin set you free from sickness set you free from demons why do we still go to hospitals today because we are still growing in faith and the administration of eternal life is still being progressive you are not embarrassed as a christian when you go to the hospital you shouldn't be embarrassed when demons are casted out they are not casted out because you are possessed you don't have to be possessed to be free from spirits if they can manipulate your mind at the realm of the mind they still need to be casted out I needed to say this as a basis because there are many people who have been lied to and trapped down through ignorance. No. Jesus looks at Peter, a man who he's personally mentoring and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan did not fear the presence of Jesus. Even while Jesus was praying, anointed with the Holy Ghost, praying in the wilderness, the Bible says Satan took him to an exceeding high mountain. So what exactly is Satan afraid of? The realm of the spirit works upon a legal system. Just because it is finished with Christ does not mean it is a reality in your life. It takes faith and the operation of your understanding to make it true. Forever, O oh Lord, is said, thy word is settled. Where? Not in your life, in heaven. It takes faith to make it settled in your life. So your assignment is that let it be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Do you believe now? So let's pray. I needed to say this so that your hearts be open to receive. There is a false way of approaching things of deliverance where it becomes a consistent warfare from a mindset of defeat. Warfare for the believer has to do with establishing victory, not creating it. Are we together? The victory has been wrought in Christ right from the foundations of the earth. The lamb was slain. However, Jesus had to come and die in time to make it a reality. That reality of the lamb being slain did not save anyone. It is the death, the acting out of that death on the cross experientially that brought us salvation. There are many people whose hearts will not be open to be free from the influence of demon spirits. It is clear from their life that there are various levels of spiritual influences. So don't generalize when you see people talk about deliverance. Don't just generalize because perhaps respectfully, maybe you had a bad experience because of an ignorant approach to it. Are we together? Just because it was inaccurately approached does not mean that it cannot be doctrinally approached from the basis of scripture producing victory are you ready to receive now that is also true for healing that is also true for all manifestations of the spirit your heart must be open to embrace and to receive the entire counsel of God so I'm going to pray right now believe me there are people whose lives and destinies are under all kinds of yokes and I want to pray now I'm going to request that you shout the name Jesus 
that is only a prophetic action to help you release your faith as I pray and while we shout that name please ushers let's walk with time and for those who are not ushers please if someone is under the anointing close to you please do me the favor of helping just to bring them out if I ask you to do like I'll do now so that we can pray and minister to them hallelujah and then very quickly we'll pray for the sick do the impartation and we're done for tonight I promise you that I will keep to time and not stretch you beyond necessary. Thank you, by the way, for your patience so far. But I believe this is why you came. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. After a lady shouts right now under the anointing, I will begin to pray for the sick. This is the instruction God has given me. There will be a lady shout loud under the anointing. Bring the lady out. Now I'm ready to pray. Lift your hands. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known within the glory of the risen Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known within the glory of the risen Lord. Let the weight of your glory Cover us, let the life of your river flow, let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us, let the weight of your glory fall. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that is not of the Christ that has tied down lives, tied down destinies, held down people. In the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, I decree and declare that those devils leave you now. Are you ready at the count of three? Shout that name. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Be delivered now. I release you now. Bring them out. I release you now. Help that lady. Please help that lady. I release you now. The devils of ancestry, operations of covenants, we come by the blood of the Lamb. Please bring them out very quickly. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. Release their destinies now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. From every oppression, my Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I decree and declare, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against you, it has been nailed to his cross. Therefore, I administer life and deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We are still praying. Every family here that has been under siege, that people don't rise, people don't excel. I don't know where you are. But in the name of Jesus, let that fire rest upon you now. I release those families now. Bring them out. I release those families now. Whether in Taraba, whether in Yobe, whether in Plateau State, in Adamawa State, all across the Northeast, the North Central, the Northwest, I come in the name of Jesus here at Peniel 2023. We decree and declare liberty by the Spirit. 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 Hallelujah. You have won the victory. 
Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit delay. I don't know whose life has been delayed and whose family has been delayed. In the name of Jesus, that chain of delay right now be broken. 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 Delay. Delay. Be broken. Hallelujah. Maybe a few women or a few ladies can volunteer and just come and help our sisters here. The choir or something. You are not singing again. So some of you can volunteer just to come and help them so that they are not scattered or exposed around. You may also help with veils if you have some place so that if you need to cover some of them, you may do that. We are praying now. We have to do that which we do within the confines of modesty and decency. We are praying in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing in my spirit salvation of the male child. There are families where men do not rise. I don't know where you are, but in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above all names, every family where men are tied down, be released now. 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 Be released now in the name of Jesus. Spirits that cause barrenness, leave God's people now. I command fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirits of untimely death, I'm hearing it in my spirit. Families that keep losing loved ones, patterns of death, that spirit of death, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Here at Peniel, we come as life-giving spirits. Death, lose your power now. Death, lose your power now. Death, lose your power now. Lose your power now. it happens well for others until it gets to your turn you keep seeing things and yet your hand never holds it i don't know who that person is but the lord is telling me to release you that everything you have seen and your hands has refused to hold it i stand by prophecy i push it to your destiny I push it to your destiny. I push it to your destiny. I push it to your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, for all those who are in front, we did not call them out to embarrass them. The manifestations here is just a devil on his way out of their lives. I speak in the name of Jesus to every spirit that has oppressed these people we come in the name of the lord god of heaven and we declare pack your load from their lives and go now 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 out of their destinies release their families in the name of jesus christ every occultic activities we bring to an end now we bring to an end now hallelujah if you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb please lay your hands on your stomach i want to pray for you now you don't have to come out for space right where you are lift one hand up and lay one hand on your stomach if you are standing for someone do the same i want to pray for you in the name that is above all names i decree right now as prophet elisha told the woman in Shunem in the name that is above all names according to the time of life I speak to you prophetically return with your miracle children 
by the word of God we veto every medical report in the name of Jesus we introduce another report and we declare like he did to Sarah may he do to you lay your hands at any part of your body where you are trusting God for healing please go ahead let's do that quickly if it's your head lay your hands there your eyes lay your hands there please if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest as I pray for you and I want you to shout a believing amen as I pray in the name of Jesus Christ there is a man with high blood pressure I'm seeing your blood pressure go down now I'm seeing a miracle happen to you now now every spirit that is back of any sickness and any infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ we command that you release God's people now release God's people now and in the name of Jesus standing in partnership with all the graces here represented we declare be healed now be healed now blind eyes open now deaf ears open now you have any kind of walking condition bone condition be healed now blood conditions be healed now migraines be healed now ulcers be healed now heart palpitations be healed now kidney problems be healed now genotype problems be changed now there's someone you've had severe pains around your ribs you cannot lie down with that area of your body this has happened for a long time the power of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you now I bring you life and I bring you healing I bring you life and I bring you healing in the name of Jesus now for sake of time whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be healed now be healed now hallelujah you can feel free all through the time of this conference or when you return back to your various churches to share your testimonies of the miracles the most important thing is what Jesus has done now hallelujah now hear me hallelujah are you ready for the impartation now what is an impartation a transference of grace a transference of grace can I tell you with all humility we are men who have been helped by God those in front you are free in the name of Jesus those who are fine and can return to their seat let them go those who are still under the anointing, just leave them, be patient with them, don't force them. If they are weak and they cannot stand up, the Holy Ghost is doing a work in them. Hallelujah. Just cover them if you need to and then hold them and be patient. I want to release graces now. I will lift my voice and I will sing. I will sing holy. I will sing holy to my Lord and Savior, my God and King. 
I will sing holy. I will sing holy. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will sing before the throne forever. Number one, the grace for speed. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Hear me. I don't know whose destiny has been there. Hold them. People will start running. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Right now, receive the grace for speed. Take that grace now. Speed in ministry speed my god please help them speed in your destiny no more delay no more delay acceleration in your destiny i release that grace upon you man of god receive that grace businessman receive that grace politician receive that grace help this gentleman in the name of jesus please help him so he doesn't enjoy Speed in the name of Jesus. Number two. The spirit of wisdom. There is a grace that can come upon men. And grant them access to superior levels of wisdom. I don't know who has come desiring that grace. But in the name of Jesus. Let that grace rest upon you now. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Wisdom like that of the gods. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. There is this grace called favor. Favor is a real grace. Believe me on this. There is an actual grace called favor that can be tabernacled in a man it is the number one reason why people make destiny progress anything that makes you reject the favor of God has cheated you in the name of Jesus I stand as one who has been given the privilege of this grace and in the name of Jesus to as many who desire it may that grace rest upon you now strange manifestations of favor men arising to help you men arising to plead your cause kings and nations arising for your sake number four there is the grace for influence and visibility hallelujah to be anointed is not enough there is a grace that elevates you and puts you in a position where you can bless your world there are many gifted people who have been kept down because of the absence of this grace you shall be exalted he says above all the nations of the earth it is important for men to see what God has put in your life and to partake of it. Therefore, right from where you are, let this grace take you to the nations. Right from where you are, let this grace take you to the nations. Hallelujah. Hear me. The grace for signs and for wonders that can rest upon a man especially if you're a minister of the gospel 
the truth is that we need this results speak it brings acceleration to ministry in the name that is above all names your hands from today will command fearful signs and wonders help that man help that man please fearful signs and wonders go and heal the sick in the name of jesus go and cast out devils in the name of jesus you begin to walk in signs and wonders hallelujah let me release a grace upon you that very few people know about please listen there is the grace that brings humility many people today have been destroyed not because of lust many people have been destroyed not because of laziness the cancer of pride is a destiny destroyer hallelujah humility is not refusing to acknowledge what god has done humility is bringing people to a point where they see that outside of the help and the assistance of god you are not able to rise you can be simple but it does not mean you are humble simplicity is not humility you know you are a humble person when your life always inspires and projects jesus i pray for you every manifestation of pride pride in ministry pride in business pride in destiny pride of life pride based on material acquisitions in the name of jesus let this grace come upon you and empty you of pride let it come upon you and empty you of pride that indeed you will decrease so that jesus alone is seen in your life finally for this session tonight the bible says blessed is the man who god causes to approach him there is a grace that makes for encounters god does not just come to men men are helped by god to meet god it is out of the abundance of encounters that men become strong encounters by scripture and supernatural visionary encounters i pray for someone this may not be for everybody but in jesus name for someone Aras, Hashileka Subiata, who has been crying for genuine encounters encounters that translate to power encounters that translate to stature and maturity receive that grace now receive that grace now please help that lady receive that grace now hallelujah over the northeast we stand as sons of the soil and we decree and declare oh earth hear ye the word of the lord let the sound of war let the sound of bloodshed come to an end upon our land let's agree together shout a believing amen we stand as watchmen tonight from adamawa state to yola to taraba to gombe the entire northeast the spirits of bloodshed the spirits that stop the advancement of the gospel as the church of the lord jesus christ here at peniel 2023 we command those spirits be banished from our territories for the sake of those who have been martyred for the gospel across all of these lands lord for every one person who died raise mighty apostles raise mighty prophets raise mighty evangelists raise mighty teachers raise mighty pastors until we become an exceeding great army in the name of jesus christ and i pray i'm wrapping up 
the spirit of poverty and lack that has impoverished our people that has left us beggarly that has taken our women to compromise turn our men into arm robbers in the name of jesus by the ministry of the teaching priest may god bring a restoration of a decent life decent families the sufficiency by the spirit in the name of jesus christ the spirit of lukewarm christianity compromises lost pride prayerlessness wordlessness lack of passion for the things of god we drive it out of this region we drive it out of this region we drive it out of this region in the name of jesus we pray particularly for our children rising the young men and women let me use taraba as a point of contact every apostle who is currently an ambroba on the street what happened to saul may it happen to them every matriarch like rahab who is still at the wall of jericho prostituting we decree and declare may the good hand of god fetch them and bring them to the fold we pray for all our missionaries all the mission agencies scattered across the villages and scattered across several places number one may god keep them number two may god keep their wives and children number three may god raise help and support for them in the name of jesus let me pray for every church here represented and prophetically the church across taraba and the northeast we may have differences in several areas that is not the issue the one thing that binds us is that we love jesus the one thing that binds us is that we are sincere in our heart desiring to serve him and see him revealed to the nations for that sake may every pulpit that is working in error be corrected now may every head that has been wrongly anointed towards compromise let there be the ministry of mercy upon such a one we pray especially for young ministers who may have been wrongly mentored and are now practicing lifestyles and ministerial practices that are antichrist and leading to perdition we pray sincerely may mercy find them and for those who are standing strong the grace to remain strong the grace to remain strong without compromise the grace to remain strong till the end let every altar in taraba be a place of salvation be a place of transformation be a place of love be a place of healing in the name of jesus finally we pray for the anglican communion here in taraba and we pray for peniel it has become a prophetic platform may the god of heaven preserve it may the god of heaven anoint it the more let it be a prophetic platform where generals are raised from this region in the name of jesus christ for in jesus much less name we have prayed hallelujah thank you jesus Let me make one altar call in this one final night of my session. There's no need cajoling you. I made an altar call yesterday and there were massive people. Please no moving around. Let's just spare one or two minutes and we're done. You are in this place and you're saying, Apostle, please do not close this program. Give me an opportunity to know this Jesus whose life has been the theme of this conference. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I may have given my life to Jesus but I was not here yesterday or I was here yesterday but I was not convicted now I'm ready to make it right with Jesus I want to count one to five 
I am looking for only one sincere person who is not ashamed of coming to Jesus. Wherever you are, those outside, if they are coming for Jesus, please clear the way for them. Let's allow them to come and make it right with Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. Begin to clap for them as they come. Wherever you are, come to Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Keep clapping. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Celebrate them as they come. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Come, keep coming. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of his lordship, and all the graces here represented we salute you for making this noble decision you have come to jesus this is the greatest miracle indeed translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son no matter what you have done and no matter how your life has been before now jesus comes gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love if you're joining them please join them quickly i want to lead them to make the prayer now lift your right hand if you will all of you in front and for all those who are following by way of the television or the internet or watching a rebroadcast I want you to say this loud and clear Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God right now I confess my sin and I receive your life into my spirit I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my king I go for whatever and backward never amen let me pray for you father thank you for these ones I stretch my hands towards them and I decree and declare by the authority of your word I declare their sins forgiven and I declare that this is a new beginning for them the grace to walk in righteousness the grace to live the victory hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.